Et comment ça va les baguettes So today I'm going to do a how to swear in French again. I know, I made countless of those videos, like free. But today there's a twist and if you read the title you already know what the twist is because yes, today I wanted to go back to the roots of what makes French swearing an art. What makes it so beautiful, so classy, god tier swearing. And I mean, how cool it would be for you to go to a dumbass who doesn't speak French or even a dumbass who does speak French and being able to tell them that they are a dumbass in French, yet they will not understand what you said. So today, let me give you how to swear in French in uh, medieval terms or en vieux François. I hope you'll enjoy! Number one, let's start with something soft. So if someone is really boring, you know, at a party or even at work or in your class, I mean, just someone who's boring. Well, in French, we would say that il est relou or il est chiant. So literally meanings that he's boring. Well, a new term to say this would be c'est un pisse froid. So un pisse froid can literally be translated as someone who pee cold. I know, we love using images. And I mean, everyone knows that what's fun with being is the fact that it's hot, right? The snow glows white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. Only a few yellow letters, and it's look like I'm peeing. The letters melting as this warm feeling is growing inside. Couldn't keep it in. Heaven knows I tried. <clears throat> yes, uh, so, uh, what? <laughs> Number two? So the second one is used for people who are, you know, a little dumb. Like, you know, a dummy, someone who's like a bit of a knothead. And actually, I said a knothead for a reason, and that's because this word is the literal translation of a knothead. In ancient French, we love to take different words, put them together, on fait notre petite tambouille, and make a new word thanks to those. And thanks to this, we got the greatest way to say to someone that they are stupid. And why am I saying that this is the greatest way to say it? Because... If they truly are stupid, they will not understand it. And it's a nodocéphale. And so nodocéphale comes from céphale, céphale, that is a term that is directly linked to the head, and nodo, which is uh, the knot. So nodocéphale, a knot head. Number three, in French there are two words that we constantly use, which are yes, putain! and merde. Both can be used the same way, although they are a bit different. In a certain way, if you simplify it, uh, merde can be seen as shit, because, well, merde is literally translated as shit, and uh, putain as fuck. But for now on, let's look at shit, merde. So, in French, we can use merde pretty much every single situation. If something is annoying you, if you don't like something, if you don't like someone, you can say that they are shit, so c'est une merde. But you can also use it, as in English, when something doesn't work out as you planned it. So, like, merde, shit. Well, in this case, we have a medieval term that is freaking amazing, and which is chiabrena. And let's say that chiabrena is a bit of a redundant word because it means une chiure de merde, which can literally be translated as a fly speck of shit. So it doesn't look like you can use it while talking to someone or about someone. So you can't really say you are a chiabrena. However, it's still pretty freaking cool to, instead of saying a oh, merde, just being like a oh, chiabrena. Okay, number four, it's going to be the last soft one before we go to, you know, what makes French swearing what it is, which is an art. And this fourth one is about a coward. 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 I mean, it's a O. Why do you pronounce it as an A? And it's not even an A. It's like a French A. So it's a A, a coward. A coward, a coward. Like, well, you say a cow. So, it makes sense, although the word cow doesn't make... <clears throat> Never mind. So, yes, you use that when you speak about someone who's a coward, a coward, and you say boursemol. And, I mean, it's pretty easy to see the picture. Les bourses are basically the nutsacks. 
and mold can pretty much completely literally be translated as soft. So, you know, you have soft nut sacks. I'm in French. So poetic. Okay, now let's get to the heart of the matter with number five, which is used to talk about someone who's an annoyance, cutely said. Un emmerdeur, which is, yeah, pretty much someone who's really annoying you. Um, a dickhead, if I can say. And I mean, the current word is already pretty nice as a picture for it, because un emmerdeur could kind of be seen as someone who's putting their shit on others. But in ancient French, we had something much better, which is un orchidoclast. Not only it sounds fancy, but it also comes from the ancient Greek words orchis and klastos. Two words that you have absolutely no idea what they mean. Plastos mean to break. And orchis is the nutsacks. So, an orchidoclast is literally a ball breaker. And I love this one because it's something you can actually use. Like every single time someone is annoying you, you can be like, you're such an orchidoclast. And I don't know, it just, it feels classy, it feels good to say this. You should try, really. Okay, with number six we're going back to something a bit more classic, which is un gougnafier. Or, and it's honestly so much better, for a girl, une gougnafias. I just love how this word sounds. Every single word that just ends with yes is, it's, it's like, it's poetic, you know, like la chiasse, which basically means the trots, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so, <clears throat> un gougnafier, or un gougnafias, maybe, is someone who's good at nothing. So you're pretty much one. I'm kidding, I'm kidding! See what I did here? I insult you in my French videos, so I really break your self-confidence and then the next week when you just see popping a video about self-confidence on the channel, you're like, whoa, that's freaking amazing, I needed that. But the truth is, I'm the one who broke it the first. Anyway, I forgot one and that's going to be the number seven and is je te conchi. So je te conchi is the greatest thing to say to un emmerdeur or an orchidoclast. Why so? Because it comes from the Latin word concarare, which literally means to be defiled with excrements. So what better way to reply to someone who's putting their shit on you, but by a sentence that is literally telling that you're defiling them with your shit. I'm hungry now. <clears throat> Let's go to number eight. So number eight is a word, or let's say an expression, to define un connard. A legit dickhead. A bit earlier I said that l'emmerdeur was a dickhead, but the truth is that l'emmerdeur is the dickhead towards yourself. L'emmerdeur is someone who's annoying you, but le connard is the literal dickhead. And so we have, I mean, had this amazing expression that I believe I'm going to start using again from now on, which is larrière fait de truiladre. So obviously this is an AFL expression. Oh, no, 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 not the Australian Football League. An advanced French learner expression. Because, you know, there's so many French R's that, like, you couldn't even try to say it, you know. Arrière fait de truie ladre. <laughs> but so, what does it actually mean? Well, une truie is a pig, a female pig, a, a piguette, a piggy, a, a. No, a so, a so, a so. Ladre means infected. So, it's already not the nicest thing to say. And. L'arrière-fée, <laughs> well, it's the remaining placenta that has been expulsed from a mother's body after giving birth. See, I told you I was hungry. Okay, for the ultimate one, let's go back to something that is a bit more classical, let's say. Sometimes we still like using it, which is 
une gourgandine. Oh, and I didn't know, but it does have a masculine version, which is un gourgandin. So those words are pretty much used for, let's say, une fille facile, an easy girl. The best replacing word in French now is basically un salaud, une salope. They are words to say basically that the person is a bitch, but you know, like a little bitch. So it's not a bitch, it's une gourgandine. And now to the penultimate and final one, the ones that are for the literal bitch! Because in old French we used to do things like, you know, professionals. We had several words for that, several expressions that were used depending on, let's say, the level of bitchness. Bitchiness. One of those. So la pute is like the bitch, it's like the benchmark. And then you had la puterelle. So la puterelle, if I may say, is the little bitch. She's like the beginner, she doesn't have that many clients. It's the little one. Obviously, you would use that to define someone who's bitchy, but not too much. And then, as the final one, you have la coureuse de rempart. She's top-notch HIV, syphilis, hepatitis, gotta catch them all. So la coureuse de rempart is, well, you know, literally <laughs> the runner of the rampart. So, you know, she has experience, because on the ramparts there were like uh, a few soldiers, let's say. So, yeah, <laughs> on that note, uh, corne guidouille! Ah! And yes, that means putain! And this is the end of How to Swear in French Medieval Edition. I hope you liked the video. If you did, don't forget to put a thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to my channel. Please click on the little bell on top of the channel. It's really hard to say little bell, little bell, little, little bell, little bell, little bell. This would help me so, so much if you could get the notification and watch my videos. I mean, the channel is, let's face it, completely dead right now. But I love making videos for you guys and I would love it so much if thanks to you, we could be able to rise this channel again. And no matter what happens, I will see you in my next video. Have an amazing, wonderful day. Don't forget to smile and bye-bye. Come on,